This past weekend, Battle of BC6 went down in Vancouver, Canada, and I've already made a video going over the top 8 yesterday. But when I made that video, I said that, like normal, there was a lot more craziness in this bracket that I'd be covering in due time. Well that due time is finally here, as today's video will be dedicated to going over all of the insane craziness that went down in the bracket of Battle of BC6. And we'll be splitting this video into a few sections. Firstly, we're going to be taking a look at solitary upsets, big wins that didn't necessarily go anywhere in terms of a big run. Then we'll take a look at the massive upsets that did result in a big bracket run, but didn't result in a top 8 finish. And lastly, we'll take one more look at some of the top 8 finishers whose bracket paths I want to highlight. Basically everyone who wasn't seated to make top 8, but did. By the way, the upset threads I'm referencing for this video is courtesy of Echo Stats. Link to their Twitter, and therefore these threads, is in the description down below. Also, like I always do, if you don't know what upset factor means, I'm about to say it a whole lot. So if you'd like to have a better idea of what that all entails, link to a helpful article is in the description. With that out of the way, let's get started. Now surprisingly enough, Battle of BC6 didn't actually have that many upsets. I know, it was an insane tournament, but at least until top 24, things went fairly according to seeding. Ignoring the DQs from both Sonics and Onin, of course. Our first tragic tale is that of the Schmix tape, the Swedish Yoshi main, who lost in a minor Game 5 upset to Canadian Steve Soar. But the real upset here is when the Schmix tape dropped into losers and fell 3-1 to Canadian Ike main Big Titar Fan 6000, the 73rd seed which eliminated the Schmix tape at 65th as the 33rd seed. Big Titar Fan 6000, by the way, is not to be confused with Canadian PT main Big Big Titar Fan 6000 Fan 6000. Very different players. Speaking of minor upsets, Min Min Main and fan of the channel Skeletal, the 74th seed, managed to snag one over Pack Street, the 55th, in a Game 5 set. After this happened, Pack Street dropped into losers and got upset yet again in another Game 5 set, this time courtesy of Everest, the 119th seed, an upset factor 2 loss that eliminated Pack Street at 129th as the 55th seed. Nadia, the 83rd seed, defeated Marvelous Marco, the 46th seed, 3-1, good for an upset factor of 2. Best player in Finland and 23rd seed Lancelot defeated Ron, the 10th seed, 3-1 with Krom, for an upset factor of 2. Lancelot has a lot of experience in Krom Yoshi, ironically enough because of the Schmix tape, who we mentioned earlier. Canadian Aegis main Tickle, the 57th seed, 3-0'd Goblin, the 24th seed, in an upset factor 3 win, eliminating Goblin at 25th. Canadian Jigglypuff main Vic, the 109th seed, gets our largest upset of this first section, defeating the Japanese Joker main Gorioka, the 20th seed, in a 3-1 victory for an upset factor of 5. With this, we can definitively say that Gorioka has a bit of a Jigglypuff problem. After dropping into losers, Gorioka went on a minor losers run before losing the Joker ditto to Lemon, the 44th seed, 3-0, which was an upset factor 2 and eliminated Gorioka at 25th. Speaking of Lemon, before dropping into losers, Lemon managed to get a Game 5 upset over German Samus Quick, the 21st seed, in an upset factor of 2. After dropping into losers, Quick would lose to 29th seed Mr. R, 3-1, for a final placement of 25th. And then, speaking of Mr. R, in Day 3, Mr. R got another upset win this time over Lancelot, who we mentioned earlier, in a minor upset that eliminated Lancelot at 17th as the 23rd seed. And yeah, I could have put Mr. R in the next section, but I was on a roll over here with my segues. But that marks the end of our first segment. We've now gone over the solitary upsets of the tournament, and now it's time for us to get into some big runs and even bigger upsets. We'll start with the smaller runs first and gradually work our way up to the biggest one. So, I bet you're wondering why there's a piranha plant on the thumbnail of today's video. Well, wonder no longer, dear viewers, because it's time we mention Dimitri. If you're not familiar, Dimitri is a plant player from Ireland and is considered one of their best players. This is awesome, because you don't often see Irish players or Irish Smash represented on the wider world stage like this. Dimitri, the 78th seed, started off by upsetting Major, the 51st seed, 3-0 in a minor upset. Unfortunate low tier friendly fire, am I right? Either way, Dimitri made it out of pools on winner's side with this win and had to go up against Tilde. And shockingly, Dimitri would actually defeat Tilde, the 14th seed, 3-1. This great win in a terrible matchup was good for an upset factor of 5. And after this, Dimitri would go on to lose to Ouch and Seesaw for 33rd. But for a while, everyone's eyes were on the Irish plant. Big D actually had a tremendous weekend at Battle of BC6 that went fairly unnoticed. But if you did notice it, you could call it a return to form for the Canadian Ices main. Coming into the tournament as the 18th seed, Big D first defeated Nestboy 12 3-0, a solid win. 
before going on to get the first upset of the run, a 3-0 win over WebJP. And yes, while this is a terrible matchup for Sheik, it's still a great win. After this, Big D would drop into losers after losing to Spargo 3-0. Now in losers, Big D first defeated Tickle 3-1, who we mentioned earlier for beating Goblin, and it was at this point that Big D got their second and largest upset of the run. On day 3, Big D managed to defeat Rofflo in a Game 5 set, which eliminated Rofflo at 13th as the 11th seed and allowed Big D to move into the loser's side top 8 qualifier. Unfortunately, Big D had to fight Tordy Goody and lost 3-0 being eliminated at 9th place as the 18th seed. Perhaps we're seeing the beginning of a return to form. And I, for one, really hope so. Ron had a very notable run at Battle of BC6. Maybe not for the upsets themselves. Ron actually only made one upset at the tournament, but for the loser's run that Ron went on. If you remember earlier, Ron lost to Lancelot early on 3-1, dropping into losers. And from here, Ron went on a tremendous tear through losers bracket, first defeating Nestboy 12 3-0, before moving on in bracket and defeating MFA in a close game 5 set, and lastly Soar 3-0. This meant that Ron's next set would be against the GOAT, MKLeo, who was in losers bracket early after a loss to Tordy Goody. And amazingly, Ron defeated MKLeo 3-1 the 10th seed eliminating the 5th and eliminating MKLeo at 13th place in an upset factor of 2. Apparently, this is the first time that Leo has ever lost to a Yoshi, like in ultimate history. Sadly enough though, Ron would lose to Ouch 3-1 immediately afterward to place 9th as the 10th seed, robbing us of having two Yoshis in top 8. And lastly for this section, we have Armadillo, who had the most notable run that didn't result in a top 8 finish here at Battle of BC6. Armadillo was coming into the tournament as the 30th seed, starting off the weekend by sweeping pools and getting through top 128 nicely, getting a notable 3-1 win on Guy Guy in the process. After this though, Armadillo had to go up against Gluttony, the 3rd seed. And I mean, come on, it's Gluttony. So let's just start talking about Armadillo's losers run already. Well, that's what I would be saying if Armadillo had lost. Instead, in a stunning victory, Armadillo defeated Gluttony 3-1 in an upset factor 7 win. At Battle of BC5, Armadillo had gotten a great upset over Shuton, who was top 10 in the world in 2023. And now, at Battle of BC6, Armadillo has defeated Gluttony, who's also top 10 in the world. But actually, this wasn't the biggest upset of the tournament, because Gluttony dropped into losers and lost to Ludo's Mario 3-0. And with the 38th seed defeating the 3rd, it was good for an upset factor of 8 the largest upset of the tournament that eliminated Gluttony at 33rd. This is Gluttony's lowest ever placing at an ultimate tournament? Well, ever. I'm serious, since Gluttony started competing in tournaments for Smash Ultimate, not counting DQs, this is his lowest ever placing. But why? Well, as it turns out, apparently Gluttony is trying out a brand new controller. Why is he doing that? If you weren't aware, Gluttony actually suffers from some really bad hand pains and has been experimenting with ways to solve it. So while that may explain the reasons behind this performance, I'm not trying to say these wins aren't valid. You don't just 3-0 the 5th best player in the world on a fluke. Either way, Armadillo moved on after this and lost to Ouch in a Game 5 set, dropping into losers and defeating Lemon and Mr. R, both in 3-1 victories, moving into the loser's side top 8 qualifier to go up against Base Mage. And Armadillo was so, so close. Up 3 stocks to 1 in a decisive Game 5 on FD, Base Mage activated the clutch box gene that every Puff player has inside of them and won that game, mostly through the use of excellent edge guards off the side of FD's small blast zones. And while great for Base Mage, it was tragic for Armadillo, who was eliminated at 9th place as the 30th seed after nearly giving Lucario his first recent major top 8. Now it's time for us to go into the last segment of today's video, big runs that resulted in a top 8 finish. We're basically going to be covering the 4 players who made top 8 without being top 8 seeds, those players being Doramigi, Tordigudi, Base Mage, and Ouch. First, let's cover the only one of them to do it from winner's side, Doramigi. Doramigi was the 9th seed headed into Battle of BC6, and with Sonic's DQing, it seemed as though Doramigi had a free path to make top 8 through winners, defeating Goblin 3-1 and having a close call against Monty but clutching up game 5 to make it into winners quarters. However, Doramigi had to fight Base Mage, who had gone on an insane run. This matchup, if you weren't aware, is really bad. Some would even call it Min Min's worst. Personally, I don't think it's that terrible, but I'd still never want to see a puff in my bracket path. But amazingly, Dormigi managed to defeat Base Mage 3-1, winning the unwinnable to make top 8 from winner's side. Speaking of Base Mage, the Puff's path had actually been pretty good. Base Mage had gotten a minor upset over Ryuo, the Japanese Diddy Kong 3-0, which was a minor but impressive upset. After this, Base Mage beat Soar in Puff Steve in order to make it into winner's quarters, 
And of course, after losing to Dora Migi, clutched out that insane Game 5 comeback that we talked about earlier against Armadillo to make top 8 through losers. The story of Ouch at Battle of BC6 is the cleanup crew. Basically, take most of the people who we've talked about so far, who all made insane upsets and runs, and chances are, the majority of them have lost to Ouch at some point in this bracket. That's not a bad thing. It's no small feat to take down players who are playing hot, especially after they make a big upset. It speaks to Ouch's fundies that Ouch was able to do it multiple times in a row. In fact, Ouch defeated Nadia 3 up, who we talked about earlier for defeating Marvelous Marco, as well as Dimitri 3-1, who we talked about for defeating Major and Tilde, and lastly, Ouch also defeated Armadillo in a close Game 5 set, who was hot off a win on Gluttony. Like I said, cleanup crew. And after losing to Yoshidora in winner's quarters, Ouch dropped into losers and defeated Ron, who was hot off of defeating MK Leo, in order to make top 8 through losers' side. And lastly, we have the breakout star of Battle of BC6, Tori Goody. It feels like everyone knew that Tori Goody was going to make big upsets, but no one was actually ready for it when it happened. As the 12th seed, Tori Goody started off the weekend by mostly sweeping Bracket flawlessly, except for a single dropped game against Lemon. But after this, Tori Goody had to go up against the 5th seed, MK Leo. And if you've been paying attention, you know how this set ends. Not only did Tori Goody beat Leo, it wasn't even close. A dominant 3-0 from the bear and the bird was good enough for an upset factor of 2, which sent Leo down into losers, where we know that Ron was awaiting to guide Leo into the great beyond of 13th place and his own sponsor to make jokes about him retiring. After this, Tori Goody lost to Hurt in a game 5 and defeated Big D 3-0 to make top 8 from loser's side. And that about wraps up this segment. If you want to see how all four of these players did within the top 8 itself, you'll have to go watch yesterday's video. Battle of BC6 went down this past weekend, and even though the top 8 graphic made people question what game they were playing, all in all, there weren't too many insane moments. The biggest things were likely Gluttony's 33rd place finish and MK Leo being double upset by Japan, and then just the entirety of top 8. Maybe, for the first time ever since I started covering tournaments, the top 8 really was more notable than what came before it. Maybe nature is healing after all. That's going to be it for today's video. Before I go, shout out to my patrons Seth Laster, Fosco333, Logan S, Prince Palm, Wah, Mr. Sinister, Happy Feet, Oshman, Mr. Bot, my two patrons, Iltis, Diamond Blaze, and Ben L. Additionally, shout out to members DJR Jr., Defective, Boston R, Goddess B, Kirby Fan, Nexus, Soko Soko, Arbiter Skyward, and my two members Mike G, Wu Tang Forever, and Strum Tripper. Lastly, extra special thanks to my tier 3 supporters Fat Blizzard, who says dogs are better than cats, Avidune, who says Mr. Rice is the go to smash content, and Iltis, who says go watch the Rivals 2 videos. If you want to support me using any of these methods, the links are in the description down below. Also, I want to give one last sincere thanks to Let Me Fly for their continued support of my channel. Link to their Twitter is also in the description. Don't miss tomorrow's upload, but until then, I've been Mr. Mice, and thank you all so very much for watching.